Hi everyone, I'm Freya and welcome to my broom closet. Today I want to talk about how... Today I want to talk about a sort of introduction to exactly how you can practice witchcraft in the broom closet. Um, so this video is just meant to be a starting point so if I gloss over a lot of things in this video don't worry about it because I will be making more videos where I go more in depth into things that I discuss in this video but this is just meant to be an overview of how you could approach starting to practice uh, witchcraft in the broom closet but regardless I hope it will be useful either way um, just to give you a starting point or an idea of where to begin How do I practice witchcraft in the broom closet? This doesn't really have a simple answer because it's quite a huge question. There's lots of different things to talk about, which is why I'm going to be kind of breaking down this question into different parts throughout this video. But all the things that I'm going to talk about in this video can be boiled down to one simple thing, which is to be creative. <laughs> Basically what I mean by that is that when you're just going about your day going around the house looking for things that you can use in your craft you've got to be creative about this and really use your intuition on um, what you can use certain objects for or, or um, how you can do something how you can cast a spell so the basic idea of being creative is if you pick something up and it really speaks to you like uh, yeah, I could really see myself using this object in this spell kind of thing. If something speaks to you, use it. You don't have to be like, oh, I don't know if a traditional witch would use something like that. I don't know. If the object or something, the practice is like, yeah, I think you could do this, then I say do it. <laughs> because, you know, whatever works, works. So definitely be creative, use your own intuition, and don't worry if something's not traditional, something's not conventional. If something speaks to you, use it. That is the main takeaway message here. So now I'll move on to how do I use tools in the broom closet? So um, one important thing to remember before I even talk about this is that uh, you don't actually need any tools to be a witch. I know that sounds crazy like you see green witches and cottage witches they have so many things they have like all their jars lined up these herbs their wands cauldron um, they have all of these things which they use in their craft but none of it is actually necessary don't feel like you can't be a witch because you can't get different like metals, crystals, stones, twigs, things like that. Don't don't feel like you have to get those things in order to be a witch because you don't need them. So the things that you do actually need to be a witch are things that are really accessible and most of the time there is nothing to hide. So these things are desire intent, focus, personal power, dedication, things like that. In witchcraft, the most basic necessities you need for just a spell is that you have to want your goal. You have to use ingredients with intent. The intent is what matters. You have to have a clear image of the goal in your head and hold it there. So that's the thing called visualization. You have to make sure that you're grounded as this allows you to draw upon power from yourself and the universe. So you have to want your goal, use ingredients with intent, have a clear image and be grounded. Also to be a witch obviously you have to practice a lot. <laughs> this might seem kind of hard in the broom closet so one of the things that you can do right now is just practice um, clearing your head 
and visualizing a goal even just visualizing by itself can eventually manifest whatever you want that's the thing that you don't even need to hide because it's already in your head and that's something you can do anywhere so that is a really basic practice one of the first things that most witches learn also my next point is to research like research loads as much as you can um because hours upon hours of research never hurt anyone you're just reading stuff <laughs> but the theoretical knowledge that you gather during this time where you can't be open about being a witch this will really help you out in the long run when your circumstances do change when you've done years of research you have the theoretical knowledge that you need um, to be a witch once you can practice freely um, so definitely concentrate on that if none of the options are available to you so if you can't even light a candle or burn incense or anything don't worry if i'm like totally glossing over um things that you can do in your craft because i'm going to dedicate a whole other video to things that you can like actively do and practice so obviously tools are nice to have because they're good for beginners they kind of remind you that you're working in another realm they help you to concentrate they give some tangibility to your craft and um, casting the spell if you do have tools because they're good they're just a nice bonus if you can find ways to hide them and preferably in plain sight that might seem like a total oxymoron but hiding your tools in plain sight actually works really well again so you have to be creative with your hiding places for objects and tools something might only be obvious to you that i won't even cover in any of my videos because obviously i'm not you but yeah you have to be really creative and find different sorts of ways to hide your tools but i will be elaborating more on different ways you can hide tools and things in obviously another video so now i'll move on to how do i get ingredients for my spells and my craft your will and your intention will always count for more than the tools and ingredients that you use visualization is also a very powerful skill involved in your craft having said that um, supermarkets grocery stores antique stores thrift stores those are really good places to get in tools and ingredients i am will be elaborating more on that later but yeah you definitely don't have to feel like that you need to find your nearest occult new age witchy store to get all your tools and ingredients because actually with herbs especially it's actually safer to get them from um, a supermarket or grocery store because those are food grade herbs you don't have to worry about the chemicals um, you know messing with your craft or your spells or anything a lot of new age stores the herbs aren't actually safe to consume so it's just better to get them from supermarkets anyway and obviously witchcraft is about connecting with nature so there is a lot of tools and um, decorations for your altar that you can just get outside just you know walking about in nature or in a park or in a cemetery things like that and the last point that i want to cover for this section is um sigils sigils are a really good tool to use in your craft um, as a broom closet witch but just because they are so subtle and so versatile what are sigils sigils are symbols that you charge with magical intention they are often made from a simple sentence that you cut out all the repeating letters and the vowels and then you create a jumbled up phrase that means nothing 
and then you can combine these letters into um, a sigil or a hideous glyph and then basically you refine it and make it into a pretty sigil. Um, there are um, other ways. You can use numerology to kind of draw out a sigil using numbers. Sigils are so useful because they can be used almost anywhere. So just some examples I'm trying to think of. Um, you can squirt them on your pancakes for breakfast with syrup. Like, you know, just make the shape of the sigil and boom. And no one knows. If anyone else just is like you're squirting syrup on a pancake. You can also draw them in the shower with your soap. And then you can wash it off with the water afterwards. You can also just write the sigil on bits of paper and you can hide them in your phone case like this. You can just, you can hide a little paper with a sigil on it and boom. But those are just a few little ideas to get you um, started. For more information on exactly how to use sigils, I really recommend runesoup.com and checking out the ultimate sigil magic guide which I will link in the description so you can go and find that. For this you should think about joining some sort of online coven or group, a grove, something like that, something online. There are quite a few groups listed in r slash coven finder on reddit. Um, there's uh, actually a list of real life covens and another list for online covens. There's a lot on Discord, some on Skype, a few on Reddit as well. And the reason why I suggest joining an online coven is that it really helps you to feel validated because you get to talk to other people who you can relate to. It's really nice to talk to people who also share your hobbies and interests. So it can give you a break from having to really hide who you are. Also, a broom closet witch can visit a subreddit I created, r slash broom closet witch on Reddit. It has a huge wiki with loads of information, lots of detail, and also on there you can talk to other witches who are in your situation and you can also ask questions that other people will answer. So r slash comment finder to find uh, witch groups and r slash broom closet witch find more information on broom closet witchcraft and to talk to other broom closet witches. The very last last point that I want to bring up in this video is to remember that you are a witch, okay? When I kind of a few years ago had a horrible existential crisis being like oh I can't, my family doesn't like this, I can't hide it. And the priestess of my former coven, she just, she just said, remember, you're a witch. And I was like, what do you mean? <laughs> they were like, well, use magic to stay in the broom closet. You are, you're a witch, you can use magic, right? Makes sense. <laughs> so I'm going to just repeat some advice that she gave me. She is unfortunately no longer with us, but her advice to me is still so invaluable to this day. So I, I am just gonna read that now for you. She said, you are a witch. You cannot be victimized unless you allow it. So maybe you should take control of your situation by being who you are. You don't have to be obvious or in your face about it, but you can effectively gain success through subtle means. Write and cast a spell that will help your activities stay hidden from your family's sight. Create a sigil that helps your family understand and accept the fact that you are a practicing witch and that it is a good thing. If your family really give you a hard time, do a honey jar spell to sweeten their attitude towards you or magic or tarot or a combination of them. See where I'm headed with this? You need to start using the tools at your disposal in order to benefit yourself and improve your life. And at the same time, they will also ease your family's worry and concern. Be a witch. So that was what my priestess told me a few years ago. It just means a lot to me. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you enjoy, um, I hope you learned 
some things about being a broom closet witch and how to approach this sort of lifestyle. I just really wanted this video to be a starting point. So please, if you'd like to see me go more in depth on things I've mentioned today, and then please subscribe for more and like this video and please share this video with other broom closet witches in the same situation because I really want to help as many people as possible. So with that, I will see you guys later. I hope you had a good day and blessed be.